Hello everyone, this is Waterfall Joe and welcome to another video. In today's video I'm going to be showing you 5 tips for editing your waterfall photos like a pro using Adobe Lightroom. Hello everyone, just a quick side note before the main video. In between the filming of this and the release of it on YouTube, I hit 100 subscribers. And I just want to give you all a big thank you for tuning into my content every few weeks and checking it out. I really appreciate it. My current schedule is I'm hoping to post twice a month every other Friday. And it's going to be any, anywhere from waterfall videos to photography tips like what's coming up here. And I hope you guys enjoy. If you have any comments or suggestions, I would really appreciate you dropping a line below. Otherwise, let's get into the main video. Thank you. So for tip number one, it's something I recommend setting up before you even get to Lightroom. And that is telling your camera to shoot in RAW. Now what's the benefit of RAW versus JPEG? So a RAW file is a uncompressed file that has no detail removed from it and it is usually a significantly larger file compared to a JPEG. A JPEG is better for people who are not editing their photos and just want to email it, Facebook it, text it. If you're not applying any sort of post-processing, a JPEG is sufficient at the cost of being a smaller file size and losing a little bit of detail. If you're using a software such as Adobe Lightroom like what I'll be using today and for most of my work, Shooting raw will benefit you greatly in terms of how much detail you can extract in terms of highlights, shadows, saturation, white balance. If you plan to edit your photos at all, you should be shooting raw. So here on the screen, you're gonna see that we have a waterfall and it's a .NEF file. Now .NEF is Nikon's raw file. So this is a completely untouched raw file. I have done nothing to it. I haven't modified, I haven't tweaked it. This is exactly how it looked out of my camera. Now, I personally take a minimalistic approach to editing. I like to do a few things that I'll show you here in a second, but I don't like to go over the top with it. I'm not a fan of swapping skies and photoshopping out every single distraction. I also just don't want to waste time doing that. I'm a fan of enhance what you have to a degree, you know, increase saturation, make the highlights not so annoying, straighten it out if it needs some cropping, but that's it. I'm, I'm not a big fan of completely over the top editing. So for tip number two, we're gonna go into this photo and I'm gonna recommend you experiment around with your white balance and the tint. So immediately upon the, looking at this photo, you're gonna notice it is way too purple, especially the waterfall. We have a purple waterfall here. Now, I don't know about you guys, I'm not a big fan of purple waterfalls. And you can see on the right here, when we look at tent, it's plus 70. Now, this is where you can have some fun with it and create your own style. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually just gonna drag the tent down to make it a little bit more green. Right about here looks good to me. Of course, we can go way overboard and make it way green or way purple, but for this particular photo, I think about 18 is the perfect number for us here. I'm going with 18 because I this is a forest photo. There's a lot of lush greenery in it, and I think it should have a nice, deep green, vibrant feeling to it. On the top here is the temperature, and actually, this looks pretty good. I don't actually think we're going to mess with it, but just to show you what it does, we can cool it down. Of course, that's way too blue. Or we can warm it up, and that's way too warm. So I'm actually going gonna, gonna to double click and that actually sets it back to default. So experimenting around with your white balance and the tint is very important. I actually shoot in auto white balance on my camera because of this exact reason. I'm able to go into Lightroom and Photoshop and manipulate the colors how I want it. If you're doing any studio work, portraits, product photography, you probably wanna have a specific white balance which all cameras can set. But as a landscape photographer, I prefer to leave it in auto white balance. A lot of people take their images in the Lightroom and they take the highlight slider and they drop it all the way to minus 100. Now, this photo doesn't really pop anymore. This is very dull and not very attractive in my opinion. A lot of people like to take their highlights down because there should be no part of the photo that's brighter than any other part. You want a nice neutral picture as some people think. I don't agree with that. 
I'm a big fan of having something a little bit brighter than everything else, and that is usually to draw your eye in a little bit more. When you see something bright, you're attracted to it. You're brought, you're brought into the photo. So for this photo, we have this bright part of the waterfall that draws your eye right into the image. You, you're instantly drawn to these bright streaks of light on the waterfall. And we are losing a little bit of detail right here, but I'm not too worried about it. So for this photo, I'm only gonna take the highlights down maybe minus 10, minus 15. It really doesn't need much highlight tweaking, but I'm going to keep the highlights above 20. A lot of people take it down to minus 80, 90, 100, and their photo looks very flat. So you definitely want to, don't overdo the, the turning down the highlights. Clarity slider is a slider that definitely has a lot of opinions about it, very polarized opinions, and I'll show you why. So if we go here to our photo and we just take the clarity slider and we bump it all the way up, this looks horrible. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Having clarity plus 100 should be illegal. <laughs> it is not good. But some people continue to do it. I personally am not a fan of turning up the clarity slider. I actually like to go minus on my clarity. And the reason why is because as a landscape photographer, I like to aspire to have my photos resemble a painting. I like to have the soft, dreamy light. So what I do is I actually turn the slider down minus 15, 16, 17. And now you can see all of this, this light streaming through the woods actually is softened up a little bit. It kind of looks uh, kind of soft and like a, a painting. And that is exactly what I want. And especially with waterfalls, with the silkiness, I want to add a dreamy, soft effect to that to me, because to me that looks beautiful. I don't want any harsh, sharp lines. That just is, it's very distracting to me. Now, if I was a product photographer, sure, I'd probably want the sharpest, most crisp image from corner to corner for the product I'm trying to sell. But as a landscape photographer, I want to have a nice dreamy image that pulls me in. All right, so for our fifth tip of the day, we're going to be talking about the saturation slider. Now, the saturation slider is just as controversial as the clarity slider because a lot of people abuse this slider. A lot of people like to take this saturation slider and bump it all the way up to 100. Now, if you're a fan of saturation and vibrance, this is it. This is what plus 100 saturation looks like. Nothing really looks very realistic here. Everything is very, very, very saturated. Our waterfall has gone completely blue. And uh, this is just not good, not good. I do not recommend going to plus 100 saturation. For me personally, I never really like to go over 20 or 25. Here's 25. In my opinion, I, I, I like to have the photo look saturated. Of course, I'm a landscape photographer, but not over the top. It, it does not need much saturation. So I did a plus 25 saturation and I am very, very pleased with this image. One of my favorite buttons that you can press on Lightroom is the letter Y, and when you press it, it actually pulls up a before and after of the image that you've been working on. So you can see here, not a lot was done to it, but I am very pleased with the outcome. We changed the temperature, we changed the highlights, we added, we actually took away some clarity and we increased saturation a little bit and that's really all it needed. I'm a big fan of keeping the work simple and there's no reason to go over the top with it unless you absolutely have to. I'm not interested in sitting here for five hours editing one photo when all it really takes is 20 or 30 minutes to make it perfect. So I hope that this helps people to understand that you really don't have to go so in depth with Lightroom. And if you're a fan of the AI features that allow you to swap skies and remove buildings from the background, that's fine. For my personal workflow, I really don't need to use all of that stuff. I, I just want a nice, simple, pretty image. I hope this content helps you with your waterfall photography as well as getting more comfortable with editing using Adobe Lightroom. If you like this kind of content, why don't you hit that subscribe button for the next video and leave a comment below if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.